I'm Mars Girl. I'm Josh Knight the First. And welcome to episode 125 of Mokori Play, the only podcast dedicated solely to all things City Hunter. On today's podcast, we're going to cover season 3, episode 9 of City Hunter, titled Love Forecast of Rain, Then Shine, the beautiful newscaster's umbrella of love. We're back! In pog form. In well, no, pod pod form. form. In pod Not form. In we pod discussed form. that, yes. Yeah. Although we have been gone for a while, the intention is to be back and to tackle some of these uh, upcoming Christmas episodes for City Hunter 3 uh, during the Christmas season. Wouldn't Could, that be nice? Yeah, because wouldn't you know it, December just kind of snuck up on us. Oops. This year's almost gone. Oops. It happens. So, <laughs> we don't have a lot to bring you guys up to date on, other than we're going to talk to you guys about today's episode, which has to do with a weather forecaster getting harassed by some weirdo fan. You know, there's lots of those in City Hunter. Remember how we've said that City Hunter 3 is kind of a... Uh, greatest a hits. Greatest hits. Yeah. That's kind of what this feels like, but it's fine. It's fine, know? yeah, certainly. So, there's, there's only two things that we wanted to kind of bring up before we actually get into it. One is that... Given the way things have been going, at least for us here in the U.S., because I know we have international people listening, it's become apparent that a character like Cowdy is a great example of bodily autonomy and fighting for it, especially for women. Uh, there are a lot of women putting out on social media, hey, if you say certain degrading things to me that suggest that I am not in control of my own body, I'm just gonna come at you with a hammer. And nobody knows where that hammer came from, I'm just suddenly gonna have a hammer. And boy, does that not just scream cowrie. Oh, absolutely, right? yes. Like, there's a sex pest out there in the world, and it is her job to hit that sex pest with a hammer. In the face. Right in the face. Because so, they deserved it. For sure. They had you, it coming. Usually it's Rio, and you know what? Usually he deserves it, so... Thankfully, um, this episode, he does get hit in the face with not just a regular hammer, he gets hit in the face with, like, the flail style. He does get hit by an umbrella a couple of times, too. At least twice. So, yeah. So, you know, that's pretty good. So, for anybody looking for that mascot out there for bodily autonomy, we'd like to reintroduce you to Kaori Makimura. She's got that shit locked down. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the only other thing we wanted to bring up was Tsukasa Hojo's work is still getting new life year after year after year, new project after new project getting announced. Disney Plus now, just within the last like two weeks, announced a new Cat's Eye project. Yeah, and we don't know whether it's a movie or a TV series. It kind of looks like maybe there might be some CGI involved in there somewhere, but I don't know if the whole thing is CG or not because they only put out that one little teaser, so it's kind of hard to tell. There is an updated version of the Cat's Eye theme, which there sounds is. pretty good. I like it. I do like that theme quite a bit. Yeah. And it just has us asking, you know, so uh, you guys realize you left a lot of story to be told for City Hunter. Would you guys like to announce another movie? Would you like to announce a series so we could finish out the story? I just want to get to the part where we put City Hunter and Lupin the Third working together. That not too? Not just each other kind of like ships passing in the night, crossing well, cause, see, silently. <laughs> like, bringing up Cat's Eye, again, in the Cat's Eye movie, you see Ryo standing there in the background. Clearly, and, that's Ryo Saiba. And then in this most recent City Hunter movie... Hey, Lupin's out there. Like, yeah, he's Lupin's just, just there. He's just kind of <laughs> driving around, and he's like, ah, shit's going down. And then he, like, turns around, and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rio's got that chick with the hammer. I'm not dealing with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Thanks, know. Tony Oliver. <laughs> Only he, he hasn't been dubbed into English yet. So you know it's coming. It's, I hope. God, I, hope I don't nice. know. E even more Lupin projects got announced. Like another movie just got announced, like a couple Dude, days ago. Just put Rio in there. Only I, he probably wouldn't fit in the tone of this new Lupin the Roman numeral three erd. Yeah, but, I know it's weird. But you know, now that we've confirmed they are in the same universe, he could just be standing around, and we know Rio can serious the hell up. Yeah, he could if he wanted. I just think it'd be weird because they're both such goofballs. So they should just goof around with each other. I know. Like, we'll get there. I think we're going to get there. In our lifetime, though? I think so. think so. We didn't think we'd get here when we started this podcast. I mean, I might die tomorrow. You don't know. I mean, I'd prefer you didn't. <laughs> I, I, I would, pay rent. I would also prefer not to. Yeah. yeah. 
It'd be, yeah, it'd be you still have us. a game coming out you want to play this weekend. God, I want to play Fantasian real bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> there is actually one last City Hunter related thing I wanted to mention, and it's so, like, it's so, it just upsets me that Tokyo Pop in Germany oh, right, can right. release, like, next year they're releasing the physical Tankobon, the physical book forms of City Hunter, the City Hunter manga. The City Hunter Omnibus. Uh, yeah, in German. Thanks, Tokyo Pop. Would somebody please like to get to physically publishing English City Hunter? Please. Like, like we're missing out over here. We, uh, like, yes, you can still go to the Manga Hot app, which is updating so slowly. It is legal in English on that app, which is unfortunately also really dumb and difficult to use. I would prefer to just own a book. Can I please just... And I know they published those first five, and then they just stopped, like, two decades ago. Okay? Like, can like we... Like, somebody get on this. Somebody, please. Please. But Coomics, what are you doing? Please just give me a book. <laughs> <laughs> I would like a book. I would like to read physical media, sir or ma'am. And this isn't fair that, like, Tokyo Pop, of all companies, okay, is on that shit in some other country. That makes me upset. I, I understand completely, and I share that enthusiasm for anger at Tokyo Pop. Yeah. But that having been said, let's go ahead and get started with today's episode. And that's where we start in the episode itself, is that Ryo is at the apartment, just bored out of his mind. Cowdy's in the kitchen flipping over easy eggs. I guess Rio just wanted breakfast. I mean, I'm sure she's just got a habit of like, yep, it's breakfast time. Time to fry some eggs. And yeah, she flips them behind her back and everything. And like, caught them, yeah. Got them. Like yeah, she's good at this stuff. And Rio is bored reading some magazine about Hawaii, which really, I bet it's not actually about Hawaii. It's just the ladies in the bikinis and the book is Hawaiian themed and there's some picture on the back cover that's like, I'm gonna take Take someone with me to Hawaii! But we don't have time for any of that shit right now. The news is on. Specifically, the weather portion of the news. And Ryo seems to have the hots for the weather lady here on this particular channel, who we do have to kind of specify here the uh, difference in name that Discotech might have missed here. So the name of the character, as we're given here in just a second, is K Amamiya. Amamiya. Amamiya, yes. The, the kanji, like, it could be pronounced either way, but she specifies Amamiya. Mama Mia. Yes. So, so her yeah. name is Kay, and we will refer to her as such here in the episode. Now, the problem here is on the screen there behind her while she's doing this weather report, her name is written out in kanji. Yeah, because she's standing in front of a large screen in Shinjuku, which is real. It's a real place. It's, it really exists. Yeah, it's even Shinjuku Station. Even to this day, that screen is still there, okay? Uh, and yeah, her name is on this screen saying, this is the weather lady, K Mamma Mia, but it's not what it says in the subtitles. The so, subtitles have it written as Megumi Amamiya, which is a technical fault on Discotech's part because the kanji for her name, which can be read as K, can also be read as Megumi, but if you listen to her for two seconds after it shows up on screen, she says what her name is. And they write it correctly after she says it, so I'm wondering, like, man, I'm sorry guys, like, QC editor, like, this could have been easily checked. You got it right this time, but incorrect this other other time. Just make them the same. Come on now. <laughs> like, all you had to do was either watch the episode for, like, two more seconds or ask somebody. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of thing, if you're just looking at the text on the page, you wouldn't think about that. No, you just have to make an educated guess, but at the same time, like, like just look. Just wait like another 30 seconds. And it she wasn't says, even 30 seconds. And she says how she pronounces it. And even Japanese people, right, when you look at kanji, they don't necessarily know which way you are going to choose to pronounce the kanji of your name. That's very true, Because yes. there's multiple readings of various kanji. So a Japanese person could have also made that mistake, right? I, I don't want to make it like, oh, it's a bad translation. No, no, like don't misunderstand. Just like there's like multiple ways to spell like Jared 
okay. It's kind of the same thing. It, same it's, idea. It's just a thing that was really easy to catch, is sure. all I'm saying. Right, I agree. And so Kay's thing, as a weather person, her thing that she brings to the news is that she likes mixing in the weather report as it's there, you know, the facts and hard data, with little things about, like, superstitions that people have about the weather. Like, at this particular moment, what she's doing is checking if this superstition about if a cat licks its face, it's about to rain, whether or not it's true or accurate which i had never heard before uh, i had to go like look it up and i guess it must be something that somebody has said in some point in time but the internet told me that a variation of that in japanese culture was if a cat licks its face then company is about to come over so you know people just say things i guess that could be what that is yeah but as she's wrapping up the weather report and you know moving on to i guess sports or something else right behind her where she has her screen where she's displaying playing her data about the weather, really quickly on the screen it flashes XYZ. And so Rio knows, because he's been watching the news, she had to be really certain he was going to be watching the news. Well, I, I think, and we'll figure this out in a second, there's a good reason why she's pretty sure he's watching. Because she's super popular. She, but it was just an educated guess, honestly. It, it was, it was. Uh, but it panned out because he saw it, and so he, pshoo, he's out the door before Cowrie can walk in with, Hello, I just made eggs. Oh, he's gone. And we see here just how popular she is because as soon as she's done with this weather report where she had a bunch of cats around, she just hands the cat she had in her arms to her production director and The producer books it. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and then she leaves. For good reason though, because there's just this trampling crowd full of people. The like, stampede of men and women who just want to say hi. Probably a little more than just say hi though, if I'm to be honest, because like, man, there's some people really upset with newscasters in this world, Josh. What the fuck? I, I don't know. What? I don't know what the big deal What's is. What the fuck? I mean, it's an older form of a parasocial relationship. It really is. You see them every single day, so you think you know them. Yeah, and the, the thing about it is, I, I notice it, it's a mix of both men and women pretty equally. She's for everybody. She really is. But I mean, like... That's been true for all of time. Like, ladies are really like, oh, wow, I really admire you, other lady. I mean, that's just always been true. In any case, this crowd of fans is, you know, running her down the street. She ducks into an alley and somehow none of them saw her. And it just so happens that this alley she ducked down into is right where Rio's waiting for her. Very convenient. I mean, he's, he's kind of clever that way, though. I mean, he's got a pretty good layout of Shinjuku. He could figure out, oh, if she's gonna run, this is the alley she's gonna run into so she's like oh well you know i'm not a celebrity so i'm not gonna be doing autographs or anything and he's like oh no 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 don't misunderstand i just want to talk about the weather because i know about and love the weather me as the person that you've never met before but i'm telling you i'm interested in the weather and she's like oh you like the weather I like weather, too. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, in his back pocket, we see Rio's got this, like, weather for dummies manual. It's basically what it says. It's not literally what it says, but it's really just the wordiest version of weather for, for dummies, dummies that you've ever seen, right? With this picture of a boat on the ocean and a son making this face like, holy shit, look at that boat on the ocean. <laughs> it's a very cute little picture there. And in very short order, Rio proves that he knows literally jack shit about weather. He just kind of looks up in the sky like, what do you mean you're carrying an umbrella? I look up in the sky and it sure looks nice to me. Like, that's all it takes to know weather. And Kay's over here like, well, shows what you know. I carry a barometer on me at all times and this bitch says it's about to rain. And he's like, what the fuck? And then it starts to rain. And she's like, you don't really know anything about weather, do you? And he's like, yeah, I do. I know the date that we started reporting the weather. And he just spouts off a date. In the Meiji era and she's like no uh that it was several years after that and he's like oh damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah like he said oh it was the third year of meiji and she's like no it was five years later i know the exact date <laughs> It was June 1st, you asshole. <laughs> but little do either one of them know, they are being watched from and, around the corner. Yeah, because you can hear the sound effect. And it's this creepy guy who, again, gets no name. We don't know who oh, this guy yeah, is. Oh yeah, we never hear, huh? Another week where that happened. But we just know this guy's very upset. 
And so Ryo, as he's jumping around trying to get at Kay, because Kay is a very attractive woman. I mean, she's she's cute enough, I guess. Like, she's not even dressed particularly, like, dressed just nice. It just well, nice. Well, she's dressed like, for TV. Yeah, she, she's dressed for, like, just the biggest sleeves. Well, the, it's it's the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. The biggest 90s weather girl sleeves, okay, uh -huh. is what I'm saying. And he's jumped at her, and she's put out her umbrella to block his jump, and he just kind of falls over the other side of the umbrella. And this guy waiting around the corner is like, ha-ha, now's my chance. And he just straight up goes in for hoping for a murder, if you ask me. Yeah, because like, he's got this electrical cord, this live wire electrical cord, and throws it into the puddle that Ryo has landed in, and electrocutes the shit out of him. Like, it could have killed him. Uh, he didn't go to the hospital, which is incredible, but we saw, uh, you know, like, his, his cartoon skeleton jaw like face Like Marv skull. in Home Alone 2 right. is what we're telling you. Yeah, dude has been fried. Some people don't survive that shit. No, they don't. The lucky thing here is that Ryo has plot armor. And she's just like, oh no, not again. And he's like, excuse me? <laughs> what, have other people been electrocuted? Well, no, not electrocuted, but... But seeing as there has been an attempt on someone's life, that's cause enough to bring her back to the apartment. And With... it's it's weird how they get back to the apartment and she, Kay, Kay's completely soaked. Yeah, like, she just gave up on the umbrella, I guess. Maybe she was just in such shock that this had happened that she was just not even thinking about her umbrella anymore. Or, like, you know, you drop the umbrella once you are, like, all the way up to the door and, like, there's nothing you can do about it for those, like, five seconds while the door is See, being I don't opened. do that mess. I wait until my body has gotten in the door and then I shut the umbrella from the outside and pull my arms in. I, mean, like, I don't know who doesn't do that. I mean, you're smart like that. Not everybody is. But now that they're here at the apartment, Kay's apologizing like, oh my god, I'm so sorry for what just happened. I didn't want to put you through this. Ryo's trying to calm her down. No, no, don't worry. It's part of my job. I know what I'm doing. I know what you need to do. And you need to strip. Uh, and of course, in the middle of all of this happening, Kauri walks back in through the door, sees all of this, is rightfully very upset. Uh, she's taken some clothesline and his kind of hogtied him up. And he's trying to defend himself. He's like, no, 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 she needs to undress because she's going to catch a cold. She's going to catch a cold. Also, she's the client. Oh, damn, she's the client. Okay, well, so my bad. Kauri cleans up real fast. Like, oh, no, sorry you had to see me almost throw this man out a window, but, uh, like, trust me, uh, this happens all the time. But uh, why don't we talk about business? Because... I also want to point out here that Kauri just can clean deadlift Rio's full weight. I mean, we've seen how strong she is. Yeah, repeatedly. but it's like, like, you can argue one way or the other how heavy the hammers actually are and her physical ability on that, but just the fact that she can lift Rio, no problem, no stress. Yeah, that's like at least 180, if not pushing 200, de would depending on how muscular he <sighs> really is. He's at least 175, I argue. Sure, sure. Being like, because what, what do we say he is? He's like 6'1", 6'2", something? like that? I would say so, yes. Yeah, so at minimum, he's about 175, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And Cowdy's like, what, 110 max? Max, yes. Right, so like, being able to lift more, well more than your body weight, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, almost twice your body weight. You know what else is impressive, Kaylin? What? Technology. Because oh, here, I forgot. So here, as does tend to happen in episodes of City Hunter, Somebody has gotten a hold of their home phone number. And we have a very blatant shot here of the counter where the phone is ringing. And now the Saiba household has upgraded to a cordless phone. Like, it's it's just such a strangely gratuitous shot of the phone. Like, they've gotten way up close and really detailed on the phone ringing, right? And then Kauri lifts the receiver and you hear the noise of her pulling out the um the antenna the antenna from the phone because it's one of those collapsible metal antenna that phones used to be built with okay with so like we, we, we kind of talked about this while we were watching in the episode you had one of these growing up oh right? sure yeah i did i did as well my grandmother had one i would always get in trouble with her because what i would do with it because we went through a few of them is i'd extend the antenna as far as it could go and then use it like a fencing foil until i would inevitably bend it yeah she must have been mad at you because you basically have broken a whole phone just by breaking the antenna and they have to go buy a new one i mean just 
at least twice. I mean, it happened. Okay, okay. okay. See, for me, it was just like, <laughs> I'm going to pull it open, and I'm going to push it closed. And I'm going to pull it open, and I'm going to push it closed. Like, I just kind of kept doing that until we got the phone where it was just kind of the, the, nub, the antenna. nub antenna instead. Yeah, and I was like, ah, that was no fun. It was real boring. Like, you can poke somebody with it, and then that's it. Yeah. Now we don't have house phones. Yay! Yay. I mean, if phones. you if you have a house phone, uh, I'm, I'm impressed that you still have a house phone. Just why? There's not really <laughs> a need for one when we all have our own line that we can take with us everywhere, and also it's at home. So let, what's the point? What is the point? Anyway, Cowdy answers the phone. Hello, Cyber Firm. We've gotten up to this point, huh? Sometime within this past season, like, they just decided, why don't we just make it an official operating business? That's what this is now. It's not just this quiet, underground, black market kind of a, a business. Now, like, they got the business cards. They got the house phone that you have to answer it with the business name. They pass out the flyers. They got the theme song. They've got mugs. They've got, yeah, they got mugs with their faces and names on them. And if the live action's to be believed, they have towels. That's very true. So I'm just saying there is no reason why anybody would not know who Rio is or who City Hunter is. Like, this is a legitimate business right now. Well, they um, they need to have an air of legitimacy because you can't really advertise in those flyers like, hey, our guy uses a gun. And sometimes uh, he will murder people to defend you. So... Yeah, we can't leave that in there. So there has to be some level of respectability to the business. Right. But... The funny part here is that Cowdy answers the phone and the voice on the other end of the phone says, Hey, we're with the TV station. And Cowdy's just like, Oh, okay. Well, we have somebody from the TV station here. Here, Kay, it's for you. Well, they ask, Is Kay there? And she's like, Kay? Yeah, here she is. And I'm sitting here going, How do they know she's here? Do, well, do you not stop and think for two seconds like, Huh, who knows that she's here right now? You weren't there, Cowdy. Does anybody know that she's here right now? The answer is no. She didn't tell anyone she was coming over here. And so as soon as Kate picks up the phone like, hello, it's the dude from around the corner that tried to electrocute Rio's ass. And he's like, I don't like it when you ignore me. You're not safe anymore. Click. Oh, damn, that sucks. And now she's got to tell the whole story to both Rio and Kauri. Like, yeah, so Rio's not the first guy that's kind of gotten in trouble. Like, I got really popular on TV and, you know, that blew up and stuff. And now some other guy uh, wants to blow up everything around me. Uh, he sent me one of those murder letters with letters cut out of the newspaper and the magazines that says, uh, you gotta stop being a weather girl. And I was like, but why though? I like my job. And he was like, well, uh, tough shit. Now I'm gonna drop a, a fucking light from the, the set of your job uh, onto the back of some other guy. And that probably could have killed him. We don't know whether that guy lived or died. Uh, that could have killed a man. Uh, and then some other guy out in the crowd while I was doing my job out on location he got a pachinko ball to the face, which that's just kind of annoying. But like, like if it had hit him in the eye, that would have been real bad. So and now far, Rio has yeah. been electrocuted. So like, that's three times that something like that has happened to just random dudes around her. And the thing of it is, we never even get a full confirmation of why dude is doing. He's just mad at her for existing. For some weird reason. There's some clarity at the end of it. But, Not really, but no. But really, really by the end of it, he just seems obsessed with her and wants her for himself. And you just have to kind of come to that conclusion on your own. I mean, some dudes are pathetic like that. That's true. It's very true. So now that they've been made aware of the full situation, Rio tells Kay, don't worry about it. We got this. This is what we specialize in. We'll take care of you. You're going to teach me about weather, and I will protect you from whoever this guy is. And Kay's telling him back, oh, I know. I know you're going to take care of me. That's what it says here in this flyer. And she pulls out the flyer that they hand out in every other episode, and Cowdy is so happy. She's moved to tears. Like, oh my god. We passed out hundreds of flyers, and we got one! <laughs> <laughs> like, she had confetti. Yeah. She was so happy. Like, I told you! I told your ass, Rio, I knew this would work! This is how you advertise! 
guys. But Kay is responding like, well, there was some promotional thing at the bottom of the flyer, but I don't really think I need the whole promotion. And Calorie's like, well, which one? We did advertise that if you used the flyer, you could get 30% off. And she's like, no, 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 this one down at the bottom. And Rio has like written in, in red ink. In like Sharpie or something. Like, like if you have a chest size of at least 88 centimeters, then we will just give you the entire job for free. And and Kay fesses up, look, I feel really bad taking advantage of you guys and getting this job for free. So she's admitting what her bus size is. Oh, sure, yeah. And Rio's just here on the table like, you don't even have to worry about that. We'll even give you more special service. My special mokori service. My special is I will bang you. Is, <laughs> is, what, is what he's saying. And she's like, nah, I'll just, like... I'll pay, uh, I will take the 30% discount, but, like, mm, I, I'm good. It's and just... Rio's, like, still trying to push, are you sure? cowrie has got hammers for a reason, so she's she's just laid into him with a hammer, and, the, and that ends that conversation. So she is staying there for the night. They're at Cowdy and Rio's apartment, but the problem is Kay's been worked up by all of this stuff, so she can't sleep. So she makes her way up to the roof to just kind of look off at the night sky, which seems to calm her down. And to his credit, Ryo doesn't try that hard to mac on her while she's up here. No, they have a pretty normal conversation about, oh, I, I loved the weather, and also I loved being able to bring my own kind of superstitions into how I tell the weather. In fact, part of this conversation even happened beforehand, uh, where, yeah, sometimes I would... As a kid, I would throw a geta, which are the, the wooden Japanese sandals. I would throw a geta, and I would be able to tell whether or not it was going to rain. You know, just very uh, hokey, superstitious -y kind of stuff. But she also clarifies, but I also really loved science weather, so I kind of tried to put both these things together, and I tried to talk to people about what the weather was and what their cultural superstitions were around the country, and I kind of incorporated the both of them together, and it turned out people really liked it, and people really liked me, and that was cool, and I just want to be able to keep doing that. And Rio's like, you know what? That's legit. <laughs> and meanwhile, while they're having this conversation, Cowdy's off to the side with a 200-ton hammer just ready. But she can't do shit. Uh, in fact, like, the way it just cuts off at commercial break, Cowrie's just sitting there. She doesn't even have anything to say. She's just kind of, yeah, no, he's clean. We're good. This, this, is a, this is a suitable conversation. It's fine. Well, right now it's suitable, but the next day they head down to the, what they say it was the Tokyo Weather Forecasting Building, which I guess is different from the National Weather Service they have over there. It's a really generic building name, honestly. It really is. There's a lot of computers in there, though. Really big ones. A lot of really big computers with very reduced not even half function keyboards because the guys over at Sunrise didn't bother animating a full keyboard. And that was a big, chunky, like it looked very reminiscent of old Macintosh computers, like the old kinda off white yellow looking computer keyboards, but it, it was missing, like, half of its keys. Well, yeah, because I was looking at the keys. I, I could make out the QWERTY, and then the U and the I, and then it stops. It only went from, like, F1 to F5 or F6 up at the top. Yeah. And then that enter button was just the biggest enter button I've ever seen in my life. So th there's a lot of letters I guess they don't need in weather. <laughs> That's what that tells me. So here Kay is trying to like, early in the morning, she's doing weather science and shit on this computer and trying to map up like, oh, weather's going to look like this across Japan today, but Ryo is just still kind of dicking with her the whole time. Like, I get it. Like, the idea is they're there super early in the morning so they can have the weather forecast ready for the noon report. Right. Okay, fine. The problem here is Rio has decided, you know, I was I was respectable last night, but today's a new day, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided uh, respect goes out the window, and I want to touch a butt. And uh, he tries real hard, and thankfully he never gets there, but he is really hard attempting to do an assault. Right, Just he's trying to grab for butt, but he gets his hand smushed by the umbrella point. Uh, K at one point smacks him in the face with that giant-ass keyboard. Yeah. And then Cowdy has to get him again with the hammer to get him to calm down. And then at a certain point, K just suddenly gets up like, oh, we gotta go. And it's like, oh, what, are you finished with your report? No, uh, they're on their way. 
Rio's like, who's they? And you can hear this new stampede of people, and this time it's not fans, it's like executives and ad people who want to sign K up for like movies and an idol debut and all these other different contracts. Really weird shit that like honestly she's got no business doing other than having looks. It would be so difficult to make that transition. She just wants to do weather shit. Like leave her alone. Like she's found what her lane is. Let her do it. Kauri really tried to stop them and she got demolished. She just did, She got trampled on. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess they ran hard enough, they ran from wherever this building is, back all the way to Shinjuku Park. That's, I mean, I guess that's far, unless the Tokyo weather whatever the fuck building is in Shinjuku right next to the park. Like, See, I got the feeling that it wasn't it's in hard, Shinjuku. Hard to tell when it's a fictional thing. I, I know, I just, it's something about tell. it gave me that impression that they were further away from Shinjuku than they would have normally been. It's, it's entirely possible. But no, once they get to the park, Kay decides, okay, now that we're away from these guys, now I can actually do the analysis of all these, like, old printouts, because she printed out all of this data on, you know, those old types of, uh, what do you, what do you call it, the sheets, where you can tear off the ends? Oh, damn, I knew until the you... The old kind of printer paper. I knew until you asked 90s me... The 90s printer paper. I knew until you asked me what they were. And then, yeah, I would usually tear the sides of the printer paper off, the left and the right, and then I'd put them together and I'd weave them together to make it look like it was, like, braided. The accordion. Like an accordion, like it was braided, like it was a strain to DNA. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that shit a I lot. I did that. Yeah. Because that was fun. Yeah. And here, again, Rio does kind of try for a second to mac on her. But he gives up pretty quick when he realizes she's literally just focused on the data. Like, she's not even paying him any attention. Yeah, she's sitting in the park and she's just looking at it. She says, yeah, I sometimes sit here and I get started analyzing this right here in this park. It's just a nice place to analyze the data for the weather. And I get really into it and then I'm ready to go and present the weather information on the news later. And he, he realizes, like, man, this is no fun when she's not paying attention to me. Like, he, he doesn't sound that dejected about it, but clearly, like, he gives up because he can tell she's in the zone, so... And, and he can tell, usually Ryo can tell, when somebody is legitimately into or enjoying a thing they're doing, and he kind of has this, like, go-to, like, hand-in-his-pocket pose where he backs off. Yeah. Like, oh, no, I'm gonna let you do your thing right now. Right. And while she's doing this, he happens to have noticed in the background, and it was there when they got to the park, there's this little RC plane just flying through the air. Right. And at a certain point, the plane changes trajectory and aims right for Kay's it's head. It's coming right at us! So he's <laughs> he's gotta be like, oh shit, duck! And he ducks her out of the way just in time for it to hit a nearby tree and just explode. <laughs> And we see nearby this creepy dude who... Do you want to bother giving him a name or no? Uh, just dude in a Volkswagen. Yeah, we see for some reason he's in like a Volkswagen Golf for some reason. Like, we're guessing something. we're guessing it's a Golf. It looks extremely similar to a, a Golf or whatever, uh, whatever else other 90s Volkswagen car was out there at the time. Just whatever boxy looking coupe they had at the time. And dude, we can see he's got a stack of dynamite just at his disposal. We don't know where he got it. Don't ask us. We don't know. <laughs> We're never going to find out either. And apparently when the plane crashed into the tree, there was a note attached that did not catch fire. Wow, incredible. Uh, I don't know how he expected that to work, but uh, to his credit, it did. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rio finds the note and he reads it and it basically says like, I'm done with you ignoring me and not paying attention to me. You're going to die today unless you announce your retirement. And she's like, lol, no, um, I'm going to go do the weather now. Well, Rio tells her, look, look, I think I know how to handle this guy, but I'm going to need you to take some risk here. You cool with that? And she doesn't really respond, but we see that right after this, they head down to, I guess, mid Shinjuku on some kind of bridge where she's doing another one of these out in the open weather reports. On location weather report. It's raining now. And she's gathered a bit of a crowd that want to see her do this report. And, you know, she's talking about traffic safety and making sure people are aware that they drive more dumb when it's wet on the road. So be careful about that. Which part of that was also some kind of superstition of, oh, well, they say not only is it more dangerous when it's wet, but also... 
people just statistically be dumber, I guess. And everybody was like, oh, that's so cute. Uh, yeah. that's, that's great. Uh, anyway, that's my weather report. Back to you in the studio. And, you know, she wraps it up and Ryo's there and he slips away for a second. And Kay notices that he's no longer there in the crowd like, hey, where'd Ryo go? And instead, it's not Rio there hanging out with her. It's the guy from the Volkswagen like, and, I don't, and I don't with get the dynamite. This, I don't get how this worked. So dude just came up behind her, put a hand on her shoulder, like, hey, what's going on? And just nobody said anything. Yeah, like, it took a full, like, 20 seconds before we even see another person. And mind you, we know perfectly well, she's been surrounded by a big old crowd of people who were like, Hey, I want to see the weather lady doing her thing live. Like, there's a crowd watching her. And some guy just walked right up to her. But, like, I guess I have to sit here and realize, no, we've seen this happen in real life in Japan. Uh, because apparently, you can just walk the fuck right up to the ex-prime minister. And do so. Oh shit! Uh, I they, wasn't gonna bring it to that. I, well, <laughs> Damn. Th- what I'm telling you is, apparently, <laughs> Japan just lets this shit happen. You can just Damn. walk right up to people with no protection at all whatsoever. Japan, what the fuck? Um, oh man, that got dark. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling I mean, you, there's. Is... I'm telling you, there's real life comparison to be made in how you handle like a public figure and you just don't protect them you just let a guy come up because like no no part of the tv crew did anything to stop this guy no and then the crowd didn't go like hey what the fuck is that guy doing like nobody in the crowd stopped for a second they just kind of looked at him like hey what's what's going on with that guy and not until he like reaches into his coat and he pulls out a stick of dynamite and he's like you see this i got dynamite like somebody could have stopped him at any point beforehand it took him a long time to get to the stick of dynamite and nobody did anything well see that's the thing too is like not even when he pulls out the stick of dynamite when he first introduces himself to her he doesn't even say who he is he's just like yeah i'm the guy writing those letters and he kind of just repeats himself i'm sick of you ignoring me and now you're gonna pay for it with and, this stick of dynamite and then the crowd disperses like oh my god he's got dynamite and it's like it's not lit and no yeah he didn't light it nobody tries to save her from the di- nobody nobody <laughs> like, did anything no member of her crew is around now yeah. like they were already gone like, they went back to the studio, like, all right, we'll meet you guys back there. And they're just gone, is how I took that. <laughs> yeah. But dude here, for whatever reason, because I guess he is just that pathetic fan guy, he wants some notoriety right now. So he's like, I want a cameraman over here right now. Where's the cameraman? I'm a cameraman. <laughs> and we see this very, you know, about 6162 cameraman walk up. A very familiar uh, frame and... A sounding sound- voice. sounding voice. Coming up with his wearing a backwards cap on his head. Like, here you go. I'm I've got you on camera right now. He's got actually like a sheet of plastic over the like camera. Like he's got a to, poncho. To, to protect the camera, actually. Which is smart. Yeah, it is smart. The cameraman, I've got air quotes right now, is kind of goading the guy on, like, oh, so you're the guy who's being real pathetic and threatening K. Uh can you show me the stick of dynamite? Yeah? Uh, okay, can you pose a little bit with it? Uh, stick your chest out, a little more, a little more, lean back, more. More? A little more? And, like, Bugs Bunny messing with Elmer Fudd, this dude's falling for, and he's, like, reaching back more, like, raising his head up and sticking his chest out to the point where he loses balance and falls into a puddle. And just drops the stick of dynamite in the puddle, and now we can see that, like, this is clearly Rio behind the camera, right? And he's like, oh, damn, would you look at that, huh? Stick of dynamite in the water, guess you can't do anything with that. And Volkswagen guy is like, well, fuck that one stick of dynamite. I've got all this dynamite strapped to my chest. And Rio's got a bucket of water because it's been raining and he's just, like, had been catching a bunch of water. <laughs> In such short order, dude, yeah, he he rips off his shirt and or his jacket or whatever to reveal that he's got a chest, like, a, a small demolition-sized row of dynamite strapped around his waist. And no sooner does he reveal that, that Rio already anticipated that somehow and then just dumps a bucket of water on him like, well, that's not going to work either. I mean, it just was already stupid in the first place because it was raining. Also, dude never showed that he had any, 
like matches or a lighter or anything. Yeah, how did he plan on lighting these things? Because that what? was the thing too. Like he's <laughs> he's holding a stick of dynamite out like it's a fistful of pocky, and in the other hand he's got K. So how is he supposed to light this thing? I don't know, Josh. I don't. I don't think he planned this out very well. well like clearly, he's not a smart guy. Uh, Cause clearly, he's he's got a few screws loose. Right. This well, was never least, gonna happen. At least he had enough wherewithal to bring a knife. He did bring a knife. So when he realized, man, I sure do suck ass, but I do have one last resort, and it's a knife. And thankfully, Rio brought his fist. To the guy's face. To, and, to the knife fight, yeah. But that's not how that saying goes. You don't bring a knife to a, a gun fight. So no, no sooner does Rio knock this guy back like five feet, that Rio goes right up to his head and then just pulls his three fifty seven right up to his temple like, you better cut that shit out. Come on now, he has threatened murder and tried to murder at least a couple of people and was at least carrying dynamite and there's no way that's legal. I know I don't know everything about Japanese law, but I have a very strong suspicion that just having that much explosives on your person is probably pretty illegal. So, like, maybe Ryo shouldn't be like, you're just gonna stop doing that. Okay. Well, no, the way he made it sound was like, the way the subs even say it is that if you threaten her again, you'll never be able to watch her do the weather anymore. Like, that's him saying, I'm gonna put one between your eyes. And the guy's just like, oh, okay, I'll stop. Like, that's all it's gonna be. Well, he's he's more scared than that. Sure, sure. And then, this is the thing I almost missed. When Ryo punched him, he punched him so hard the rain stopped. It did stop raining. Because we need a really sunny, upbeat scene right here at the end, you know. Uh, also, Kaori's here now, and uh, she hogties him. Yeah. I, I was... <laughs> that's, how, that's how that goes. He, she just shows up, and she's like, well, I mean, I saw you on TV, because, you know, you filmed everything, so <laughs> yeah. I came down. Down here. <laughs> so again, how does nobody not know who City Hunter is? Right. Also, did they see he's got the gun? I'm see, gonna assume I'm... the camera was like he dropped the camera and it just didn't see that part or something. Also, you were saying like Rio's probably not mic'd up. He's probably not my yeah because when Kay was on TV, you know she's holding a mic, right? And so she wasn't holding a mic for any of that. So nobody was really properly mic. Nobody was wearing lapels. Okay, it wasn't that kind of shit. Right. Uh, so I'm I'm assuming Rio was smart enough to hide his identity here. Because he was never in front of the camera. That's true. And if he put the camera down to deal with him, he probably turned it away. But Kaori knew what was going on. She knew who her client was. And she knows Ryo's voice. Well, even if she, she might not have even heard his voice. But she knew. She understood. She understood that, oh, clearly I see Kay is in trouble on TV. And she's my client. So I gotta get down there. Oh, well, Ryo kind of solved this problem. Hog tie him. And leave him for the cops. Because the cops actually showed up. Because this is the very end In of the, the show. In the last five seconds. For literally one zoom out frame, we don't see any animation out of them. It's just one cop car and two cops jumping out of the car like, Oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it kind of wraps itself in this nice little bow here at the end. Kay's like, oh, thank you so much, Rio, for defending me from that guy. The weather's going to be clear now. Would you like to go look for rainbows with me? And Rio's like, uh, yeah, I can do that. And Kaori's like, uh-uh, you're on flyer duty. I mean, the flyers worked the first time. We gotta pass out more of this shit. And Rio's just like, no. <laughs> Fly to the sunrise. And there's the cops in the background. Yeah? And that's the end of the episode. Yay. Yay. Yeah, pretty simple. That's a simple one. Yeah, pretty straightforward plot. I, uh, mean, I feel like this is another one of those good ones that, like, if you're trying to introduce somebody and you want to show it to them in a bubble like uh -huh. what city hunter is this is just a one shot that's really harmless and there's not a lot of stakes and you don't need to know a lot about what's going on this would be a perfectly decent one yeah I think. other than one comment about how ryo wishes umibozu was around to see all those cats you don't need to know any other characters yeah it's it's a an offhanded comment anyway like it's just a throwaway line so yeah. you'll be fine. It, you can introduce people to City Hunter with this episode. That's a pretty good middle ground right there. I mean, it's not the greatest episode, but it's also not the worst episode. No, it's just a, well, generally speaking, this is what City Hunter is like. 
Yeah, because it's got all the basic earmarks. Ryo pulled the gun at least once. He didn't fire it. Cowdy's using hammer. There was at least, I think, one comedy crow or, or oh, dragonfly. Oh, I didn't even see. I, no, it was I dragonfly. It was dragonfly. I don't remember it at all, so. It was, it was behind Kay's head. Uh, I'll trust you. I trust you. And otherwise, yeah, that, that's all it is. The only thing that's missing is a mini cooper. Uh, yeah, that would be good. More gun usage and more mini cooper would be good. Maybe there's a, a, a slightly better example episode than this one, but this one's pretty close. This one's pretty close. Yes. And so next time here, we're rounding out this season with two back-to-back two-parters. So four episodes left to go, and uh, the next two-parter is Christmas-themed. Also wedding-themed, but Christmas-themed. So wait, is this the episode where Rio and Cowdy have to pretend they're married or they're getting married? It's this two-parter, but it's not the first episode part of the two-parter. It's the second episode part of the two-parter. Right, right, right. And the thing about it is you, we'll get to it when we get to that episode in t- uh, uh, two more episodes this scene of them at the altar is kind of iconic because it means so much to cowdy yeah even if it's not really real but uh, also some interesting stuff coming up with some interspliced footage from a cult during the original broadcast of these episodes that's a thing oh, that happened yeah we're gonna have to talk I about will that. explain that when we get there, which might not be until the part two of it, I don't believe. I almost forgot about that. That's crazy. Yeah, we You will, guys are going to want to tune into that. We'll never see it on the Blu-rays, but I will have to talk about it when it comes up. There's a very good reason why you won't see that. But yes, have that to look forward to in these next two episodes coming up, and then we're going to wrap up City Hunter 3 very soon. Very soon. Possibly by the end of the year, and if not the end of the year, the new year. That'll be great. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So come back next time when we cover the 10th episode of City Hunter three a wedding dress for christmas part one and if you want to catch us outside this podcast you can always find us both now over on blue sky i'm at josh knight first dot bsky dot social and i'm at marsgirl.com thank you all so much for listening to our 125th episode of moko replay and if you don't come back next episode you suck what well, don't, don't tell them they suck i'm always dogging on you i gotta switch it up sometime All right, I I appreciate that, though. Thank you. You're welcome.